One of the most confusing parts of life is that bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. If God existed, why would he allow this to happen? Where is the justice? Shouldn't karma ensure that everyone gets what's coming to them? In this video, I'll give you my answers to these questions. I think bad things happen to good people and vice versa because of three main reasons. The first is that we don't actually know what's good and bad for us. The thing is, we're mere humans, and regardless of how much we like to deny it and act like it isn't true, we don't know everything. We can't know everything. And that means that what we think is good for us often turns out to be bad, and what we think is bad for us often turns out to be good. In fact, I've observed this so many times in my life that I even wrote a blog about it. But so you don't have to read it, I'll explain the concept here, which I also came across in the book How Not to Give a F by Mark Manson. Since I know it to be true, for me, one of the most compelling parts of his book was when he argued that the worst experiences of our lives can be the best lessons, propelling us to change for the better and to adopt new, healthier, more useful habits, outlooks, and beliefs. For him, it was his friend's suicide that gave him the impetus to turn his life around, lose weight, and start caring about his life. For me, it was my first breakup and having a two year long cross country bicycle tour that I had poured my heart into get cut short after getting hit by a truck. Both times what I was deeply, deeply shaken by and distressed about ended up turning my life around in ways that I couldn't have planned or made happen on my own and which in many ways ended up being a lot better than the future I had imagined for myself. These experiences, along with a few more, are what taught me that what initially seems like the worst thing that's happened to us can actually, in the span of our life, be a blessing. Unfortunately for us, in that present moment, we don't have all of the information available to be able to holistically judge our current situation. Put simply, we don't know what doors it'll open and what avenues it'll shut. And this is precisely why it's pointless to try to control everything, because things are much bigger and more complex than we could ever understand, and we can never have all of the information to make a fully informed and foolproof plan. Of course, we can force things and make them happen on the plane of the ego, but they will be unstable and unreliable. They likely won't last and or will lead to negative consequences of equal or greater measure. You may be asking, why should the consequences ever be greater than your momentary gain? This is because karma, yes it exists, takes into account the fact that you took something that wasn't yours. You forced things. You thought your opinion and way of seeing things was greater and more important than others' opinions and ways of seeing things, and even than that of the universes. This means that to have things go your way, you did things that were to the detriment of others, which also means that you, in one way or another, sacrificed your ideals, virtues, character, and true nature. And this all has consequences. To summarize, karma doesn't mean that good things will never happen to bad people. It means that your actions have consequences. Sure, you can win by forcing things and doing them the dirty way, but these wins will be shallow and they will eventually be transformed into a source of misery. Only by doing things the right way can you attain peace, which is much deeper and stable than the fleeting happiness and ego boosters that come from doing things the easy way. The second is that everything is always in flux. This is kind of a continuation of the previous point, but I've been listening to a book on chaos theory, and it explains that our lives are continually branching based on everything that happens to us, around us, and far from us. Even something stupidly small and seemingly insignificant can come to impact our lives in huge ways, and that includes things external to us too. Things we have no control over. As we've all once heard before, a butterfly flapping its wings in Brazil could cause a hurricane in Italy, and that's not hyperbole or woo-woo, it's very literal and scientific. Knowing this, there's no way we could calculate or have a relatively accurate idea of how anything, much less big turning points or life events like the ones I mentioned in my first point, will come to affect us given enough time to develop and mature as plot points in our lives. Because nothing is ever static and everything is always malleable, bad things don't necessarily have to stay bad, and neither do good things have to stay good. Anyone who's had a stock or crypto coin come plummeting down on them after reaching an all-time high can evaporate this. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. 
The only constant in life is change because life is dynamic. It's a mix of highs and lows, which themselves have the potential to invert and become lows and highs. Once again, this is why we won't ever be able to confidently predict which life, which way life will take us. The best we can do is adopt an attitude that chooses to view and magnify the good and everything. This not trying to control everything is the only way to guarantee that you'll always perceive that there is good in your life, regardless of what may come your way. Besides, just because you're a good person doesn't mean that bad things can't occasionally happen to you. This is why it's important to understand that our world is a probabilistic one. Things happen by chance. Sure, the more good you do, the more good will likely be reflected back at you, but that doesn't mean that the random bad event can't happen too. And the opposite is also true. Bad people usually live in a downward spiral, but that doesn't mean that they can't occasionally come across some positivity in their lives, because again, our world is random. The third and final reason is that there is no good and bad in life. Everything just is. Our minds love to categorize things. Hot, cold, good, bad, tall, short, etc., etc. But people rarely ever stop to consider that these labels are relative. Yes, the coffee you drank this morning was hot, but when you compare it to lava, can you still see it as hot? And yes, in America, I'm average height for a woman, but in Mexico, I'm considered tall, and in the Netherlands, I'm considered short. I'll give you another example. You may have already heard mention of this study, but take a look at this animation. What color do you think the square is? I'll give you a hint. It's not gray, teal, or pink. It's actually somewhere in between, a sort of mop. It seems to change colors, but this is only because of the context it's in. If it's in a teal environment, it'll look pink. If it's in a pink environment, it'll look teal. And an environment of the same color, it'll look its true color. This is a visual example of how our perception is affected by context, but it extends to pretty much everything in life. In that way, you could logically conclude that nothing is absolutely anything. Instead, everything in life is relative including things we see as good and bad. The thing is, categories only exist in our minds. Take taxonomy, for example. Biologists love pretending that they can categorize life into families, groups, species, whatever, but scratch just below the surface and you'll find out that all the scientific certainty is just a mirage for a whole bunch of blurred lines, overlaps, outliers, flukes, and anomalies. The point is, categories, labels, judgments, they all just exist in our minds because our minds are obsessed with order. But the real world is a lot messier than that. Nothing is anything, it simply just is. So next time something happens to you, don't take it personally. It isn't, it isn't a reflection of you, whether good or bad. It's likely just a consequence of your actions so far. Either that, or it was just a fluke. <laughs> If you like this video, then you might also like the video that I'll link in the end card. It explains the different ways our minds can affect how we see ourselves and everything around us. Before you leave though, comment down below letting me know if you think there's ever a time and or place where labeling things as good or bad can be beneficial. I want this to be a space where we can all share with each other, so I really look forward to reading what you have to say. As for right now though, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.